Hi, everybody. This is Greg Meikle-John, co-founder of Enrollment Resources and our senior VP strategy, Sterling Simpson. Hi, Sterling. Howdy. How's it going? Good. Doing well. Awesome. Um, today, we're going to uh, talk about how tiny little habits and tiny little oversights can create a difference of potentially millions of dollars in the fortunes of um, a career school or any school for that matter. Uh, you've had a lot of experience with this, haven't you? Um, what are your thoughts on Kaizen and performance improvement? Well, I, I'm a big fan of the whole Kaizen principle because instead of trying to go after like the big whale and doing too much or going after something that might be a far away goal, you're, you're identifying areas where you can improve incrementally and it's lower hanging fruit. So you find a number of different areas where you can prove just a small percentage point, but you add it all together and you get a large measurable improvement. So I find that's a much better way to go after improving yourself. Yeah, so in, in this podcast, we're gonna demonstrate some, some examples of that and uh, to give people watching this a visual on how tiny imperceptible changes can transpire. I've been reading this book, which I've just, it's like hand in glove for our company. Um, called Atomic Habits. And uh, it's a tremendous book that basically um, the math that was, dem was demonstrated is if somebody in broad terms improves 1% a day, at the end of the year, they'll have improved 30, 37 times, 37x. If they go and have a bad habit 1% once a day, they'll be at three tenths of 1% after a year. So it's a double-edged sword is the nature of habits as it relates to uh, process improvement. Uh, before we start, I'll just tell a story from this book. Uh, it's a story of the uh, British cycling team. And up until the early 2000s, this program, they were abysmal. They never won a Tour de France. They never won a World Cup. They never won an Olympics. They were horrendous. They were so bad, in fact, that not only would the, the top bicycle companies not sponsor them, they wouldn't even sell them bikes because they were afraid of that association with such a crappy team. Um, but this guy, I think his name was Dan Brailsford, came along as the new technical director and he instituted a, um, a process called, uh, it's my language, but it's an aggregation of um, minimal, improvements, minuscule improvements, aggregation of minuscule improvements. And uh, it's again, that 1% per day kind of thing. And so here's some of the things that he did, which initially people found were laughable. Uh, things like having his cyclists wearing heated overshorts in order to keep optimize the temperature of their leg muscles and in turn, allowing them to fire it um, when cycling. He, on the inside of the tech trucks where they worked on the bikes, um, he had it painted, uh, the insides painted Arctic white so that they could uh, see dust and dirt and smudges and they could clean it so that it was like an operating room. They had um, nutritionists and doctors come in and, and which is very common now in pro sports, which is to create an optimum uh, carb loading and, and a nutrition function for the athletes. So there are all of these little 1% improvements that unto themselves were just really almost a nothing. But when you started to stack them up, holy cow, they started to win. Uh, I think last year, the first Brit in forever just won the Tour de France and they, they were meddling heavily at the Olympics and the last two or three Olympics and winning World Cups. And it's just all uh, attuned to the, this 1% phenomenon. So without further ado, let's, uh, why don't you bring up your screen and we're gonna role play a couple of situations to actually teach people how this works. Excellent, Greg. So um, you're just gonna get started to do this lost revenue finder on your Beauty school, a three campus beauty school that you have. And yeah, uh, we're that's uh, Greg's Beauty. Greg's Beauty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so 
at your beauty school, um, yeah. can you tell me how many inquiries do you get in a typical month? Oh, about 160 a month. Excellent. And so of those inquiries, how many yes. come through internet channels? About 80%. Excellent. And how many admission staff do you guys have? I have two between three campuses. Okay, excellent. And how many new enrollments do you get in a year? Mm, yeah, the three campuses, about 145. And what is the average tuition? It's uh, $19,000, including both. Excellent. That, that's all in. Excellent. Okay. So next step, we're going to look at your admissions funnel. So we want to look at the different steps and the rate that people move through these steps. So if you don't have this information on hand, uh, just give me an estimate. Give me your best guess. And I can help you work through this mm -hmm. to try to come to a number that you feel comfortable with. And always remember, we could go back and populate this with uh, update numbers later. So for now, we'll just do the best oh. we can. Well, I can tell you that a frustration of mine is uh, that we get all these uh, internet leads that come in off the website and stuff, and we're in beauty directory and stuff. And the contact rate with these people is really, I'm not happy at all. I just get so angry at my reps for just not pursuing these properly. Um, maybe one in, one in five, we might get a hold of. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And so of the people you make contact with, how yes. many of them are your reps able to book a tour or appointment with? Well, there's so few of them that they do really well. I would say probably three quarters of them agree to come in for a visit or have a second phone call, that kind of thing. Excellent. Three quarters. Well, that side of it. And uh, no, no, three quarters. Yeah, sorry. Not, yeah. <laughs> That's even better. Wow, two or above average. How many show up? to these appointments of the two. Oh, appointments. that's really maybe half. Okay, excellent. And then of that half that show up, how many actually end up applying? Oh, um, you know, it's pretty good. It's about two thirds. Okay. Mm -hmm. And about 80% of those get accepted because we have a oh. really good financial wow. aid system yeah That's awesome and almost all of them we have a six six week rolling intake almost all of them like 85 90 percent will actually okay. start wow but let's go with 85 just be conservative but that's still great um okay thank you so this is a excellent so your school is greg's beauty and uh, Contact that. And we are going to do. So let's see what we I, got I, here. I, I, whoa. That's crazy. I don't believe that. Wow. I'm not and leaking that much revenue. Well, well, let's take a look at this. So, on your marketing side, it actually says you guys are quite efficient because you have exactly the amount of leads you should for the number of reps you have. Uh, okay. Average rep should handle. 80 leads a month, and okay. you have 160 leads for your two reps. So, so what you're, you're really saying to me is that they're just not doing a very good job in terms of converting those leads, is what you're saying. Exactly. They they have no excuse because they're not being overworked. They they have the optimal amount of leads. Or, or, or underworked. Or underworked, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's optimal. So they should just be um, following best practices. And that will speak to what we got here in the next steps because oh my 2.6 million. You may think it's a large number, but if you really think about it, your your contact rate is uh, so low that if we were able to improve it, there's so much money left on the table here, and we can. So what you're saying is, I'm going to get if I improve my contact rate to best practice, I'm going to add 140 thousand a month to my the revenue from my school. Th that is a possibility, but what I like to look at is let's do it incrementally. Because we don't have to hit that whole thing at once to get that revenue. We could look at chipping away and getting half of that, a third of that in all these different areas because there's more than one area to focus on too. But yeah, that is how much is possibly available right there. And um, that's crazy because it's below best practice. It's actually lower hanging fruit. 
when you want to improve beyond best practice, like if you want to increase your book tour rate, which is excellent, right? that will be a lot of work because it's a diminishing returns to get every percentage point above 75. Oh, I see. So what you're saying is get a good chunk of it. And well, let's go and can we redo this then? And see yeah, let's what redo happens? this. Okay. And so remember that number at 2.66. That's a nasty number, Sterling. So what do you want to test? Do you want to see what your contact rate would be if you were right here on the cusp of best practice? So uh, in other words, if I have, if I have like, uh, I don't know, 120 internet leads, I can get like three quarters of them or no, let's say 60%. Let's say two. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah, let's see let's, what would happen there. Okay. And, this and you, is have some, you have some solutions on how I can get there, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and again, this is just the one area. We could also focus on some other areas of improvement like the tour show rate. Uh, so, um, the, yeah, the appointment or tour show rate. So the show rate. Hold on, Scott. Oh. Go back to uh, improving the show rate as well. I heard uh, um, somebody say to me that if I send a text message one to two hours prior to a, a meeting, that that show rate can go way up. That's uh, somebody from a texting company told me that. Exactly. And it also gives them the opportunity to reschedule if they aren't able to make it, which then again prevents a no-show as well because you can reschedule. So that. what if I put that into play, that's an easy thing to do what should that that should improve correct yeah um what let's would just it say be? let's just improve it 15 percent 65 so it's okay. a modest improvement it's about half of what's there to get you the best practice All and right, let's see what happens then there's even more on the table so oh whoa that's like uh 1.7 million dollars improvement per year just saved Oh, that's like a hundred and forty thousand dollars in additional revenue a month that exactly. I can drive into my school system. So uh, I could I could do a lot with that. I could do some online teaching. I could uh, have bursaries for kids who are tight for money. I could. Uh, oh man, there's a lot I could do. I could add in that massage program. Wow, Sterling, this is amazing. So, and as, as you can see, because you're a cap for reps, this also gives you enough revenue. If you were to increase your lead flow, you could yeah. hire another rep with this and uh, be able to constantly improve upon these efficiencies. What about hiring a missionary rep, somebody who will um, set appointments for my two reps? That's great, especially if. Um, you're able to find someone who you could really specialize at that, who's excellent on the oh. phone, and they could just load up your other reps who can then focus on actually doing interviews and building quality rather than having them do as much of that reach out. Um, so, yeah, that's a great way. Anytime you could specialize in your admissions, you're going to have people who become experts and they'll improve their core task and their core numbers. Okay, so now, folks, we've uh, completed this uh, little role play. But, and, and this is just done with, in a very simple dozen or so fields, but surprisingly, this is accurate. We've seen this hundreds and hundreds of times where this is the pretty fairly accurate amount that school will um, leak. So all we have to do for your school uh, is uh, you can um, uh, put in your own inputs. Uh, and so below this podcast, we're going to have a little paragraph supporting the podcast and a link that you can go and you can just mess around and uh, try different scenarios and just see for yourself if, in fact, you're leaking enrollment revenue. And if you want some thoughts on how we can close the gap, one of our, our experts on process improvement can sit with you on the phone for a bit, give you some ideas to run with. And, we can kickstart a relationship perhaps. So Sterling, uh, any final thoughts before we say farewell? Yeah, um, one thing I love about this is you could look for areas to improve, but it's also good just as a diagnosis. It could help you understand what you're good at too. And right. so you might be looking at 
increasing your lead flow or spending more money in an area and you do this, you might learn that that isn't the area you actually need to focus on. Your resources could be put better into another area. And a lot of people really neglect the low hanging fruit. Um, it's, a little, it's really easy to improve something that is below best practice than something that's already above that. And most schools don't know what best practice is. So it's a great way so, to learn that. So what you're really saying is that the majority of these little uh, gaps, people can handle on their own without the need for a guru or an ad agency or a sales trainer. They're just little things they can do themselves to go and improve their revenues. Um, so I, I like that idea too, because you know, not people don't need fancy gurus. They can do a lot of this themselves. So exactly, it's just that they don't know what they don't know, right? So once they learn, right. these are the areas that I can improve, and what is the area the most um, available to improve? Then you could focus on the right areas and put your resources in there. And right, so you go and you, you yeah, exactly. So you can take. Uh, I land on a couple of uh, little habits and like uh, atomic habits, the book, which I highly recommend you guys get. Um, you can chip away at those habits. Um, here's a habit. Can I share a habit before we jump off? Great. Now this is new agey. Okay. Sterling. Okay. Um, okay. You, you can, you bring your client facing people together and you, and, and others within your school and you, you brainstorm together on all the ways your school can help uh, people, help students, help employees, help the community, help employers. And you build out a list of around 20, 20. And then you just uh, type it out on just something this size, a little piece of paper. And, and then you tape it onto the corner of everybody's desk. And then you invite them to just look at that list of 20 things every day, have it um, for a month. And my prediction is, is if you do that, you will increase your re enrollment revenue by 10% within two months. Now you might be saying, Greg, Sterling, you guys are crazy. That's so, so easy. Well, here's the thing is if I'm wrong or I'm partially wrong, nothing bad will happen to your school except people will be much more self-aware as to how they can help people. If I'm right, then, you know, you guys might be buying Sterling or I a beer at a conference. <laughs> so uh, with that, um, Sterling, uh, I guess this podcast is over and hopefully this been has been helpful to people who've watched it. Excellent. Excellent.